Hi, welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. This is Dr. Ann O'Connor, and today I'm going to talk about percent yield. For those of you who are new to stoichiometry and these types of calculations, I would suggest you watch the first three videos, Stoichiometry Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. So let's just review quickly what the limiting reactant is. I like to use my analogy of a car manufacturing plant. In order to produce a car, I need one steering wheel and four tires. Now, if I have a thousand tires and seven steering wheels, I'm only going to be able to produce seven cars. So that means my steering wheels are limited. Okay, they limit the number of cars I can produce. And we found that the same thing applies to chemical reactions. Usually one reactant is in excess and the other one is limiting. Now, what about the case where I have eight tires and two steering wheels? Then theoretically, I should produce two cars. But what if something goes wrong? What if one of the steering wheels is damaged? Well, then I would only be able to produce one car. Even though I have two steering wheels and eight tires, when one of the steering wheels is badly damaged, I can't use it in the car. So I could only produce one car. So that brings us to the theoretical yield. Let's go ahead and define that. This is the amount of product that is produced if the limiting reactant is completely consumed in that chemical reaction. Those are the calculations we've been doing when we use our balanced chemical equation and the amounts of reactants to determine how much product is produced. We are calculating the theoretical yield. And again, that's assuming that all of our limiting reactant is consumed in that reaction. But in reality, what we, uh, when we run the experiment, okay, we end up with an actual yield. And this is the amount of product that is actually formed in the experiment. And it's usually going to be a little less than the theoretical yield, or it can be a lot less. And uh, that's going to depend on experimental error. So what we do is the amount of product that is actually obtained in the chemical reaction is expressed as a percent yield. And our percent yield is our actual yield in grams divided by the theoretical yield, the one we calculate, times 100. Let's go ahead and do a problem. First, you might be wondering, well, why is the actual yield less than the theoretical yield? Well, remember, there's going to be experimental error. So you're not always going to produce the theoretical yield. Um, for example, you have to weigh out the reactants. Okay, You have to measure their mass. Uh, so there could be some error introduced there. There could also be side reactions taking place and a multitude of other things going on to introduce experimental error. So your actual yield is usually going to be less than your theoretical yield. So let's go ahead and look at this problem. We have 6 grams of hydrogen being reacted with 25 grams of carbon monoxide. If 21.3 grams of methanol is recovered, what is the percent yield? So we're given the actual yield, which is, I'm not sure why that 42 is here. Um, that should actually be 21.3 grams. So we're given the actual yield. We're told that that's how much was actually recovered after the experiment. So what we have to find is the theoretical yield because we need to compare our actual yield with theoretical and then multiply by 100. So let's go ahead and work the problem like we've been doing in the past. And um, I'm not going to write out the mole ratios and all of that. If you need more help, with stoichiometry, then I suggest you watch the first three videos. All right, so we have, first thing we have to do is determine our limiting reactant. And so what we'll do is we'll start with the carbon monoxide and we'll go ahead then and convert that to moles. And one mole of carbon monoxide is 28.01 grams. Okay, our grams cancel. Now, what I'm going to do is assume that we react all of this carbon monoxide to determine how much methanol would be produced. So we have a 1 to 1 mole ratio of carbon monoxide to methanol. So we'll just write that in here. And of 
course, this cancels. And this turns out to be 0 0.892 moles of methanol would be produced if all of the um, carbon monoxide was reacted. Okay, so let's do the same with the hydrogen. We have 6 grams of hydrogen. And remember, this is molecular hydrogen, so one mole of molecular hydrogen is going to be 2.016 grams. Okay, grams cancel. And again, let's assume we react all of the hydrogen. Now, let's look at the mole ratio. We have a 2 to 1 mole ratio of hydrogen to methanol. So, one mole of methanol. And here we have two moles of um, molecular hydrogen. So let's see. That would work out to be 1.49 moles of hydrogen. So we're limited by the um, carbon monoxide. Okay. Um, we cannot make any more than 0.892 moles of methanol. So that's it. So that's limiting. So let's go ahead and convert that 0.892 moles of methanol to grams of methanol. When we use the, uh, when we do percent yield, uh, we usually want to be in grams. So the actual yield should be in grams and the theoretical yield should be in grams. And we already have the um, actual yield in grams. So we'll go ahead and convert this to grams. So uh, 0.892 moles of methanol. And let's see, one mole of methanol is, I believe, 32.04 grams. That's 28.6 grams of methanol produced. So now we want to go ahead and determine our percent yield. And again, according to the equation there, our percent yield is given by the actual yield, which is 21.3 grams, divided by our theoretical yield, which is right here, that's 28.6 grams, times 100. And we get 74.5%.